And welcome to the Aaron Katzman Show. I'm your host, Aaron Katzman, and we are coming to you from the spiritual and soon-to-be financial capital of the world, Jerusalem, Israel. And we're here to speak to you about your life, your money, and your investments. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to email me at Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, at lighthousecapital.co.il. You can check me out on the web at www.aaronkatzman.com. Be sure to follow me both on Twitter and LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So stock markets have dropped. I don't know if you've noticed, but <laughs> dropped a lot, okay? And what I want to speak to you about now is, A, not to panic. I'm not a big fan of panic, okay? We don't like to panic. Um, and when you're investing, you shouldn't panic. And also, especially if you're a young investor, giddy up, right? This is like the opportunity. I don't say the opportunity of a lifetime, but it's a great opportunity. Why is that? Because the fact of the matter is markets drop. It's just a fact of life, okay? They go down. But what you can't do, you can't do is panic. When things start dropping, you go, oh my God, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do, right? Which is the reason, ladies and gentlemen, that I decided to put sort of the sunset, the tranquil background behind me of the sailboat sailing on calm seas, as the markets drop. Well, actually the real reason I'm doing that is sort of sunny outside and I need to block the glare, okay? <laughs> Let's just go with the first one first because it's very, uh, it's calming, right? It puts us all in the mood. So there was a great article recently by Larry Swedro, who is a market analyst. And he talks about the fact that markets drop, okay? I'm gonna get a little bit in the weeds, but we're gonna come back out of the weeds. Um, and I'll, we'll get rid of the statistics, but bear with me, okay? He says, to demonstrate this point in its monthly field guide, Avantis showed that over period, the, over the period from 1926 to 2021, which is like 96 years, 95 years, the S&P 500 experienced 29 declines of at least 10%, about once every four years. Um, the median drop among this sample was 20, minus 20%. And the median length of time it took for the market to return to its previous high was 194 trading days. The fastest time to recovery, by the way, was 50 days. Okay, keep that in mind. Drops of at least 5% occurred 90 times, which is basically once a year, right? With an average decline of 8.9% and the average time to recovery of 62 days, which is a couple months, right? Drops of at least 20%, which is the definition, the conventional definition of a bear market, occurred 15 times, which is once every six years or so, with an average decline of 28%. Oh my God, right? Not good. But the average time to recovery was about 369 days, which is just over a year. So first of all, what's that mean? It means that markets decline on average um, often right? At least once a year, you can have a 5% drop. And that 5%, the average of that 5% drop is 8.9%. Keep in mind, more, right? So it didn't quite qualify for the 10%, but it was pretty close, right? And that happens almost once a year. So the first thing that you need to remember is um, if you're going to invest in the market and you're going to have exposure to the stock market, you have to be prepared for the markets to drop because that's just a fact of life. They do, right? And you're not going to be able to time things. And if you don't have let's say the, the framework, let's say the, the, the psychological framework, the, you know, the personal bent to, to be able to withstand it, then you've got to figure out how to reallocate things. Okay, because it's a role, the stock markets are a roller coaster um, and you have to be prepared. When you're on the roller coaster, you put on a seatbelt, right? And there's times where it's fun and there's times where it's not fun, but at the end of the day, you have a good time, which is sort of the same way uh, markets work, which isn't that a good comparison? <laughs> significant declines, he goes, as he goes on to say, significant declines are not rare events, right? They happen fairly frequently. And in many cases, markets recover reasonably quickly. What's that mean? In other words, he says, normal times include sharp market declines and periods of high anxiety that should be born with equanimity. That's a good word, Larry. As the evidence demonstrates that, eff that efforts to time the market are highly unlikely to pr pr prove productive. Knowing your financial history will help keep you Keep your equanimity. Okay, one more batch of statistics. And then with this, I'm going to finish boring. Okay, since 1950, 
Okay, now we're only talking about a little more than 70 years, right? There were nine months when the S&P index lost at least 10%. The worst loss was minus 21.5% in October 1987. And the average loss was 13.7%. Over the next three, six, and 12 months, the S&P 500 index provided total returns of 9.5%, 16.4%, and 26.6%, respectively. Investors who abandoned their plans due to panic selling not only missed out on the great returns, but they were then faced with extremely difficult decision of determining when it was safe to get back in. That's one of the problems with market timing. You have to be right twice, not once, okay? That's huge. Okay, because I see that happen all the time. People say, you know what? Let's sell and we'll wait for a better time. And then when things go, go up, we'll go up. Well, how do you know? Like, first of all, how do you know when things are going to stop dropping? How do you know when things start going up that it's not what we call in, in investing parlance a dead cat bounce, right? How do you know that it's not sort of a few days where the market's going up and then just go back down to get again and even more? We don't know. There's no way to predict the future. We have no idea. All we can know so we can learn a little bit from history. Now, again, past returns, I'm going to say this, regulators, woohoo! Anybody's a regulator out there. Past returns obviously are no indication of future results in markets, right? But we can learn from history, okay? Historically, things drop and historically, things recover. That doesn't mean that in this drop, it's going to happen, okay? But it's happened for the last 94 years, okay? So what's that mean? It means you should stay patient, okay? I like to tell people don't even look. Right, once in a while, look at your portfolio. But if you're invested well and you're invested in strategically and, and, and yeah, correctly, you know you certainly don't have to hit refresh on your computer all the time uh, to see what's going on. That's that's just going to make you even more anxious and have more anxiety. And when when you hear on the news or you log on and you see, oh my God, the market lost two percent, that's going to send you you know to panic mode. So you don't want to do that. Right, very very bad. Okay. If you're a young investor, or even if you're a middle-aged investor, and you've got some money in cash, giddy up, right? Now is the time, because statistically, if we've seen historically, things recover. Okay? I'm not guaranteeing anything. It's just what's happened, okay? It's the past. It's what happened. So if you're looking to get into investing now, or you've got money free, you know, you've got your tax refunds, or you've saved money, and you know, once a year, you always add money to your account, or whatever it is. Now is a great time. Might be better in a month from now. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe things are going to drop another 20%. I have no idea. But what I do know is when things are off 10, 15, on the tech side, 25%, 22%, whatever dropped, right? The NASDAQ. That tends to be a pretty good entry point, right? Your local supermarket, wherever you do your shopping, they put up a sign saying, everything in the store is 15% off, okay? On top of the other you know, sales they have. That's going to be pretty good, right? People are going to be pretty excited. Wow, I get to, you know, do my shopping and save 15%. Now, again, I, they might have a, they might have a sign next week, which is 25% off bolster. I have no idea, right? I can't predict the future. What I do know is that I'm happy if I can buy things, if I can go shopping and save 15%. Same thing with the stock market. If the stock market is quote unquote on sale because it's dropped a lot, that tends to historically, again, historically, no guarantees. But historically, that has tended to provide a pretty good entry point for um, investors, which is ultimately what you want to do, right? To, to finish up with his article, he says, market declines are necessary evil. And the very reason the stock market has provided the large risk premium and the higher returns investors can earn. But there's another important point investors need to understand about market declines. Investors in the accumulation phase of their careers right? Young and middle-aged people, basically, should view such periods not just as a necessary evil, but also as a good thing. The reason is that large declines provide those investors, at least those who have the discipline to adhere to their plan, with the opportunity to buy stocks at lower prices, increasing expected returns. It is only those in the withdrawal phase, right, which are retirees, which we can speak about another time, who should fear sharp declines because withdrawals make it more difficult to maintain the portfolio's value over the long term. Thus, those investors have less ability to take risk, which should be built into their plan, right? It shouldn't come as a surprise. All of a sudden, oh my God, the market dropped 20%. Now what do I do? That should already be built in, right? When you're, when you're retired, you should have a financial plan, right? You shouldn't have your, your foot on the gas pedal pressing down you know, full force, right? You should have a much more balanced portfolio, probably. Obviously, it depends on your own personal financial situation. 
but you shouldn't get yourself into a situation where if the market were to drop 15, 20, 25, 30%, you're totally up the creek, right? That's bad. You should take, take care of that before you even get in that situation by allocating what we call asset allocation, allocating your portfolio more correctly so that if that were to happen, you wouldn't take such a big hit. Okay, smart investors know that while they can't control markets, they can follow Warren Buffett's sage advice to avoid timing the market. And the key to being able to do so is control one's temperament. Buffett says, the most important quality for an investor is temperament, not intellect. If you don't have a plan, immediately develop one. Make sure to anticipate sharp declines and outlines what actions you will take when they occur. Okay, that's it. Don't panic. Take advantage of the drops if you have the ability, if you have money spare, if you're young, if you're getting into investing, you're lucky, right? It doesn't always work out that way. Well, maybe it does actually, if you think about it, right? If markets tend almost on average once a year to drop more than 5%, but closer to six, seven, eight, nine percent So pretty much that means almost all the time is a good time when the market is a good time to invest, right? If you're starting out, because chances are the markets are going to drop. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoy the background for, for one last 30 seconds, okay? Enjoy the serenity of the sailboat in during sunset. You've been tuning into the Aaron Katzman Show, where we speak about your life, your money, and your investments. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to email me at Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, at lighthousecapital.co.il. Check me out on the web at www.aaronkatzman.com. Be sure to follow me both on LinkedIn and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll speak to you soon.